At $200, a Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventure. Now you're playing with power, super power. You're the king, I tell you! You're the king! Only for Super NES. Listening to the SNES podcast with your host, Soul Blazer. Hello, everybody. This is uh, the Super NES podcast, episode number two hundred six. Uh, as always, these are your hosts. I am Greg. He is Joe. Hi. And today we are covering a game I've wanted to look at for a while, just never found time in our schedule to slot it in. So uh, we're going to be looking at this time a game I picked. Um, a game I've played before, but never, uh, 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 but never played on this system. Uh, we're looking at a game called Flashback, which is also the full title, which is Flashback Quest for Identity. But most people just call it Flashback for, uh, simplicity, simplicity purposes. So, uh, which was, the, which was a, uh, developed, developed by, De- uh, uh, Delphine Software and published by US Gold, uh, in, uh, uh, North American Europe, and curiously enough, Sunsoft in Japan uh, hmm. for the system uh, back in 19, back in back in 1993. So um, now, Joe, we already established we, we already established like with the podcast this is your first time playing this game. Um, <laughs> this is this is a this is this is a, an improved version of the techniques and the techniques game style and, and gameplay style that was used in a previous Delphine game, like Another World, uh, aka like Out of This World. Yeah. Um, did you ever play that one? I have not. So the closest thing to this game that I played would be Prince of Persia. Okay. And I enjoyed the the, the original Prince of Persia. It it had its moments. There was definitely some frustration, um, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, it, it was an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Well, the best way the best way to describe this game would be like cross between like you know Prince of Persia like and the like, God of This World. So I mean, it's a very like it's a very fit description that you bring the game up now so yeah. <laughs> uh because the gameplay the gameplay in this game plays similar to prince of persia in many ways uh but the overall but the overall the overall gameplay engine and mechanics of the game is taken from out of this world so mm. um and this game's had numerous releases over the years which we'll get here um i, I know which we'll, uh, you know, which we'll get into here in a moment. I, I played this game back in the day when it first came out on PC. And I, I never really liked it. So I never played the Super NES version, however, because, because, because I already had the PC version. So yeah. um, I was curious to see how good of a port uh, that this game is on that system. So, um, yeah, so uh, Flashback's a pretty famous game. So we're not going to go too much into history about this because there have been literally, like, podcasts and videos dedicated to talking about this game so uh but we do want to give some perspective for those of you out there who may uh, who, who may also like joe henry um you, you like never play this uh we've already covered delphine and us gold in our uh in our, like our previous episode on uh like another world so i'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about them like right here but um but uh but both but both another world and flashback were revolutionary when they came out because they used a rotoscoping technique uh to basically do some very sophisticated and very sophisticated and very good looking graphics in both games. Um, I realized 2023 that that, that, that isn't look um, you know these graphics are nothing special. But 30 years ago when these games came out they were mind blowing because you know it was the very like you know sharp detail graphics um, you know and the very like you know like um, handsome looking anime uh, um, uh, animation techniques like the game used. So um so it's uh, the game originally came out on the Amiga in, uh, in 1992. Although the developer stated that the actual, or quote unquote, original version of the game was the like it was like it was like it was the Genesis version. So, um, but to, but uh, but the, Gen- the Genesis version came out the following year in '93, like along with the DOS, the Super NES, uh, and the Acorn Archimedes, which was another European computer system. So, and um, you know those versions. Those versions have some differences, like they uh, have some versions, some differences, like in the Amiga version, like they're not like too much. Um, the Amiga version, for example, had a had, um, had a function where you could zoom in on action, like whenever like your character like opens fire. So, 
uh, but that was not for, that was not taken very well by um, uh, uh, by players or the move from the other version of the game. So, and the game was advertised as being like um, you know CD-ROM game and a cartridge because back when this game came out in 1992, 1993, CD-ROMs were just starting to come on the scene. Uh, they started having they started having very first CD-ROM based games. I remember those days very well, very well because I've always been both equal parts a heavy computer and uh, computer and console game console gamer. So in that period, 1993, you had a lot of games that came out on disc first, and then uh, disc first, like then got CD-ROM upgrades later on down the road. So, uh, because the whole, the whole industry was in a very weird transitional period between between those things. So, uh, Delphi was trying to do a game that could be released on floppies, but had the quality and fidelity of a flight like CD-ROM game. Uh, because CD-ROM drives at the time were still very expensive. Uh, so, but. But however, uh, as, however, as, however, as, 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 as technologies continued to improve, uh, there were also there were also later CD-ROM versions of the games came out. Uh, the flights came out the following year, uh, which, which flights also had like enhancements, uh, and those versions came out like for the. Uh, Sega CD, 3DO, CDI, uh, uh, DOS, Macintosh, Light FM Towns, and finally, finally the finally Jaguar got a cartridge version, uh, like '95, like as well too. So most mostly what they added the CD-ROM version of the game, like with some voice acting. Um, they also uh, uh, the games also load the the. the like the games also load like a bit faster as well because they have the, the uh, um, I mean like they have the extra you know the extra quality on it so um, you know they also uh, they also have some FMVs that the, the FMVs like out of the games like as well too the Sega CD version is considered by many people to be quote unquote the best version the, the best version only because it added them because, because it added the most stuff they not only added voice work like voice work for the cinematic. Um, uh, uh, F and V's. They also had a voice work for the gameplay itself too. So, uh, and also like CD tracks as well, which were not carried over the other uh, CD-ROM versions. Of the game. So, um, well, well, the game the game did very very well when when it released. We'll talk about that later later on. So, there have been numerous re-releases, upgrades, and versions of the game that came down the pike since then. So, um, uh, there was a uh, there was a proper sequel to the game called Fade to like a Fade to Black, which came out. Flight camera computers, flight computers, uh, back in 1995. Uh, there was, um, so there was a, there was a, there was a remake of the game just called Flashback, which came out for PC and console at the time in 2013, which kind of follows the same game, just like, you know, the same usual differences, like, the differences that you had to remake to have. And it's like the original game got a remastered version as well, just just, just simply called a called flashback remastered remastered edition uh, for the Switch and PS4 and Windows back in 2018, which is still like commercially available like as well too. The game even got a like the game even got a homebrew port uh, authorized by the developer on the Dreamcast 2017. Hmm. So it's pretty fair to say this game. It's pretty fair to say. To say it's pretty fair to say that. It, just to say this game has been on almost everything over the years. So, <laughs> uh, which is, which has been how much, um, you know, the, um, you know, how much the game was loved back in the day, like how popular right. it was. There is, there, there is, there is apparently, and apparently, and, I, and apparently, but I was not aware of this, um, a company called, so, like, so the original developer of the game works for a company called Microids, uh, now, uh, which still, which, which still French based and they have the rights, uh, like the game. Uh, they're, they're, they're working, they're working on a second sequel of the game, Flashback 2, which is, huh. which supposed to be out this year for PC and consoles. So, because, um, which, uh, which, yeah, which, yeah, just kind of, which again, just kind of goes to show just how popular this game's been over the years. Yeah. So, but they, um, so, uh, anyway, um, uh, so the Super NES version of the game, along with the, and I forget to mention this to you, Joe, because I honestly like write about it. Uh, the, um, the Super NES version of the game, as well as the, as well as the Genesis and Sega CD versions, uh, included, like, included an actual Marvel comic book, uh, look at the game that explains some of the story. Um, you did not look at that, did you? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, if you want to take a quick look at it, just like we we're talking, that's fine. But it, uh, it's probably my fault because I forgot to uh, mention it. Um, the comic book really helps. It, the comic book really helps us set the scene because uh, there's not much story given to the start of the game. So the comic book really goes it. The, the comic book really goes a long way in helping you explain what's going on as far as your as far as your character and background, the background and that kind of stuff. Because um, because you play the code, yeah, but you just play the game straight. 
Um, you're not giving too much when you're not giving too much flag when story. Um, flashback actually has a, a flashback actually has like a very deep involved story with it, uh, which is more pronounced like in the remake. Uh, but the story is given to you in bits and pieces, uh, bits and pieces fully explained through the game. So the comic book really helps how the, the comic book really helps to set things. So and it's a pretty complicated story. I mean, like you know, it's um, you know, like in a nutshell. It's year 2042, uh, but you're playing a guy named Conrad B. Hart, um, and basically he wakes up uh, with amnesia, you know, hence the, um, right, hence the, you know, hence the full title of the game. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and you play through seven stages of the game trying to figure out, you're, you're first trying to figure out who you are, get your memory back, and then figure out what's going on, and then you're trying to stop what's going on, because you, because you eventually unravel a very complicated plot involving, like, you know, aliens, which have infiltrated human society, you know, shape-shifting, um, and you have to get from Titan, a large moon of Saturn, or Saturn where you crash back to Earth to stop them and whatnot, so, um... You know, and the and in the original computer and the Super NES version of the game, the story is told mostly in like you know brief cutscenes or, or, or cutscenes or, or animated text. As I said before, the latest the later the later CD version of the game uh, uh, expanded upon that with like FMVs of like FMVs of voice acting. So, um, but so it's actually like a very like deep story, but you really wouldn't know too much about that going go, go, go um, uh, going to the game unless you unless you either unless you either read the comic book uh, or had a previous experience with a previous version of the game. So, um, but yeah, as I, but yeah, as I just mentioned before, the game is seven stages. Um, the gameplay is very similar to how Prince of Persia plays. Conrad can like Conrad can, uh, Conrad can walk, jump, turn around. He can jump uh, pretty high, I'd say. You know, he can like grapple onto you grapple on objects, pull himself up. He can fall a fair bit. Uh, you can't fall too far or you die. But um, you know, I think the I think the I, I think the game is a pretty realistic like fall uh, damage system in it. Um, yeah. You also have a gun you can pull out to shoot, uh, which is like a fair weapon. You can you, you can also find shield and you can find can you can also find can you can also find shield modules too, that you can use to shield yourself against like enemy fight enemy shots. Um, and you can also like crouch uh, like as well too. And you can also and you can also turn and face the, uh, and face the, and face the environment to interact with objects, uh, which we'll be doing a lot of in this game. Trust me. So. Um, so, so yeah, so that's the, so, uh, so, so yeah, that's a very brief nutshell as to how the history of the game and how it plays and everything. Like I said before, there have been numerous, much in-depth, uh, treatments of the, treatments of this game. If you're curious, uh, yeah, and or a fan, I definitely recommend checking, uh, checking one of those out. So, I had experience with this game, like I said before, going into the games, going into the game like I knew what to expect. Uh, Joe, since you went in blind, I'm more curious, uh, f- f- um, you're very curious here, your like, initial thoughts. <laughs> so, <clears throat> one thing I want to get out of the way. So, technically, my first experience with this franchise is Fade to Black on the PlayStation, mm. which I did not know. So, the sequel, huh? Yeah. yeah. So, that was one of the one of the few games that I had for the PlayStation when I got my PlayStation was Fade to Black. Yeah, because I don't know if you. So yeah, so just there. Um, just tying to that like thought like real quick. Um, I know you say they need to finish the game. Uh, this game, this game, this game ends with a clear, uh, 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 this game ends with a real cliffhanger. Um, which definitely set up the sequel because spoilers, um, which I think is we're okay saying because it's like a 30 year old game at this point. <laughs> right. But, um, Conrad succeeded in the mission eventually, uh, eventually, like eventually stopping the aliens, they're, they're just stopping the aliens, like they're, they're just stopping the aliens, like the home world because they had more home world, home world because they brought there. However, however, because he's so far out, his ship can't make it back to Earth, so it's like right. the game ends with him. Like the game ends, like the game ends with him going, um, uh, putting himself like this in animation to like to hopefully like wait for rescue. So, and I've never played Fade to Black, uh, the sequel, but I assume Fade to Black opens up the like it was uh, um, opens up the same way. So. so I haven't played Fade to Black since you know the '90s. So, yeah. um, and and it's not a game that really stuck with me. Um, but it was one of those, like, when I was looking up some information about Flashback, because, like you said, I, you know, I wasn't able to, you know, beat the game and get very far. So I had to watch some videos and whatnot. And, um, someone mentioned it in one of their videos. And I was like, oh, it's like, I've played that game before. <laughs> and so, like, you know, as a third person action game, um, I enjoyed it for what it was, but like, you know, clearly since I can't remember all the details, it, it didn't sit with me. Um, that yeah, being, Fade to Black was not as popular like as their like flashback was, like for reasons. Yeah, because, and I think if yeah. like, maybe if there had been like a subtitle, like Fade to Black 
flashback two or something like that. Like maybe they would have, you know, fared a little bit better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just me spitballing, but sure. um, Yeah. Like this was my first experience with this game. Um, I was half tempted to check out the Genesis version uh, because of the fact that um, quite a few of the videos I saw said that the Genesis version came first and that this was a port of the Genesis version. Um, That's mostly true. But. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I was kind of tempted, but I decided not to. Um, even funnier side note, um, I actually own the Flashback 25th Anniversary on my Switch, and I've never okay. played it. And I didn't touch it for this podcast yeah, because I, I was like, myself, oh, well, so. maybe they made improvements and I wanted to play it the way it was meant to be played. Sure. Yeah, I need to check that out on my Switch to see how much it, um, I, I depend on how much they want, play how much they want for because I'm curious about that version myself now. So Yeah, I see it go on sale on the eShop every once in a while. I don't want to say mm. I paid five bucks for it. It wasn't a no, lot. No, that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but. so th- <sighs> man, where do I start with this game? Um, so right from the get go, um, and you know, I, I, I was telling Greg, I I streamed this on Twitch, um, last night. And, uh, one of the things I pointed out was like the cut scenes, um, at the very beginning of the quote unquote full motion video, if you want to call it that, um, it was very choppy. And I don't know if that's because of the emulation this is one of those games where I wish I had the hardware to actually play it because I don't know if it was the limitation of the the emulation of the hardware or if it was the emulator itself. But the cutscenes to me, they were better than a slideshow, but they were still really choppy and it felt kind of slow. Like I felt like I was, you know, not getting the full experience. And I don't know if that's, you know, how that is yeah, that, you so know, on the I hardware. Did not- Right. I did not see anything with choppiness. I definitely agree with you, like, the slowness, however. And that's because of a combination of, like, A, they were kind of slow in the first place. Right. Because, like, the, uh, um, you know, and B, and B, and B, and B, and B, and B limitations of the hardware, that their hardware, their hardware that's being, like, played on. Because, again, they, because, again, the crime is on Super NES. Yeah, so. Right, right. And that, and that all makes sense. And, like, I, I wasn't knocking it for, you know, that, that presentation. Like, I, went into this expecting like it's going to be pushing the super nintendo i expect to slow down i expect the things not to run as smoothly as i thought they might so yeah because like you have to under- yeah because you always have to remember as far as the rotoscoping goes um uh which both this game and another world used rotoscoping is very beautiful to look at it gets like a very by like, very sharp clear for um of like you know fidelity to yeah. it however it is slow it just limitation is it, it, that can't be helped it, right to, just a slight just limitation because of all the because of all the math, math mathematical equations or whatnot running the background to, gen, to, to generate all this you know it, it doesn't matter what system the game's running on um but flight can be slow because of that so you start the game out um and it so this is probably where the manual would have come into play um, this game just drops you and yes. you got to figure it out. Um, yep. which I mean, there are, there are definitely games that are like that. Um, this was one of the complaints I had last night while I was streaming. Um, is that like, I, I was walking around for about 45 minutes before I finally said, you know what? I'm going to go to good old gamefacts.com and look up a walkthrough because <laughs> I had been through the same set of screens. I don't know how many times and I was getting really frustrated. Um, but you know, instincts initial, you know, I, I, I went down to the platforms. I was able to get to the, uh, the, the room underneath. Um, I got the holocron, the holocron scene, um, reminded me very much of total recall when Arnold Schwarzenegger sees the, um, recording of himself and he tells him to get his butt to (laughs) Mars. There's a reason for that because, like you know, that it, um, you know, you know, Velvet's even said this game was strongly inspired by the original Philip K. Dick uh, book, which uh, a book which sort of recall was based off of. So okay, so um, yeah, that that yeah. completely makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like that little nod and like watching gameplay of Pat uh, future levels and whatnot. It looks like it's got a bit of uh, 
cyberpunk kind of Blade Runner slash, uh, yeah, I guess Blade Runner would be a good example. Running Man, there's literally a level that is like the Running Man. Um, so there's definitely some cool little nods to other sci-fi films. Um, the whole idea of how they, how Conrad got into this issue in the first place is very much a nod to They Live, which I thought was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, th- th- that's, that's really, I hate to say it, but I, that's really like, it's not where the positives end, but that's, <laughs> that's really all I can say. So, um, getting the hologram was easy, you know, that was pretty intuitive. Um, but then I, you know, I couldn't go anywhere once I was in that room. So go back upstairs, well, go back up to the, to the previous screen. And then I go to the right, and there's a gap. And I could not get past that gap. It took me, I don't know how long. So, finally looking at a walkthrough, it says, you're supposed to run, and while running, your character will automatically jump to the ledge. Well, that didn't happen. And my uh, the few people that were watching my stream were probably... Thoroughly entertained watching me try to make this <laughs> jump over and over and over, and then finally it just magically happened. I I don't I don't even know. I somehow I made it. I made it, um, which was even more disappointing because checkpoints are few and far between. Um, so by the time I did make it and I was able to get to uh, the first couple enemies that you encounter. Um, I ended up walking into some green mist, um, which keep in mind, like you have, you get, I got this, uh, what is it? It's like an electric generator thing that you can mm, use yeah. to, you're supposed to use it to set up a bridge. Um, so I'm like, Oh, this green mist must be like energy that's coming out. It'll fill, you know, the device I got with energy so I can get this bridge. Right. Um, and keep in mind, I, I, I do, I did this because I was kind of skipping through a walkthrough, not only on Game Facts, but that by this time I had a video out so I could kind of see how it was being done. Well, I skipped so far ahead that I didn't see where they charged the battery. So my assumption was, oh, the bridge that is extended is green, so it must come from this green mist. And I walk into the green mist and end up obviously dying. With no checkpoint, that sets me back. So now I'm back at like the beginning of the game, having to go through all that again. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. The checkpoint in this game is not as good as like a, another world. I thought, unfortunately. So, yeah, but. It, it's also deceiving because when you do hit a checkpoint, it says that it's saving your game, but it's not. Oh, I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, but up in the right corner, I, it'll actually say saving, but it's not huh. saving. It's more or less making like a note that you hit the checkpoint, but it's not saving. And I found that out uh, the hard way. Yeah, because the game used the password, uh, <laughs> uh, password system. So because yeah. it's to give your password like every like you but, like every stage. So, but with the little combat and uh, platforming that I did deal with, um, I thought Conrad moved pretty fluent for what it was. Um, it is slow and methodical, um, but he moves with a purpose. So, um, he can roll, which is awesome. I thought that was great, especially if you end up encountering, like, there was one point where I encountered an enemy that I wasn't expecting, because it was kind of like, there's a lot of, uh, leaps of faith in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so I went down a hole and didn't know where I was going to end up, and there was an enemy down there. So it was one of those where I was able to duck and kind of roll out of the way, um, and then shoot him. But, uh, that was... Really nice that they had that, you know, that animation. It was very fluent. Pulling out your gun. I mean, you look awesome. You got your gun out. Um, he, he does that nice little idle pose where he's got the gun up in the air. Like he's like up against the wall. Um, yeah. I, I mean, th- there was definitely things I liked about this game. And I definitely, this is going to be one of those games that I'm going to go back to. And when we do um, our review at the end of the year, this is going to be one of the games that I definitely come back and visit and we talk about. Um, because I, I want to spend more time with it. 
and uh, I want to also play that um, anniversary edition and see what they did different um, to yes. this game. But um, yeah, like the sci-fi references, gameplay, um, all that's top notch. Um, I do have other praises for it, but I'll I'll wait till we get to those sections. Sure. No, I think your commentary and your, your commentary, like your criticisms, are pretty like are pretty accurate, especially for somebody first playing this game now in 2023. Because again, like you know, again, like I like before, I um, I've experienced this game like when it first came up like 30 years ago. So mm. so and th- and so and, and so 30 years ago, this game was like mind blowing because it's right, like right. you know the rotoscoping graphics were just so beautiful to look at. But and like you know the and so and, and like I said the, you know the game. We already we already familiar with games like Prince of Persia and Another World at, the, at this point, so the gameplay is very similar to those games that we have to expect. And yeah, having said that, this this is this is a very hard game. Yeah. I mean, like I mean, like I mean, the game, but the the game the game the game doesn't the game does not sugarcoat it at all because because again, like Another World, you, I cannot tell you how many times I died. I died. I died like Another World. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, it literally probably was. The number of times I died in that game probably exceed the national debt. Right. How many times? How many times I died? In it. And and so this game's this game's the same way because it's like death comes quickly and easily. It's one of the, it's like one of those games you have to have patience playing it. You have to have like skill and figuring out what to do, and you have to like you have to learn from your experiences. Like you know, okay, like okay, I can't do this. I have to, so let's try this and see if it works. Okay, it works. Move on. Mm-hmm. So. Um, the checkpointing, I thought, I thought you were right. Checkpointing could have been a, a checkpointing that could have been like a bit better. Uh, you know, I thought, I, you know, I, you know, I thought, I, I thought another world had a better checkpoint than this game does. But um, you know, but but the game is certainly once you know what you're doing and what you're doing in the game, um, it's pretty fun. It flows like pretty well. You know, like you said before, the shooting, the the the, the, the shooting parts of the game like work nice. But um, you know, it does get a bit annoying seeing um, you've seen those like mini cutscenes every time you pick up an item or do an action like or whatnot. Yeah. But you know, but again, they were pushing the technology of the time, trying to show up what they could do, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So so um, so uh, as that to be expected. But so um, yeah, the controls the controls the controls handled pretty well. I thought um, you know uh, um, you know Conrad feels responsive enough. In that Prince of Persia style, like you know, the the the, the running and the jumping and the, the jumping and the, and the crouching and like whatnot. Right. So it's like it's not realistic total per se, but again, it, but again, it feels similar to if you play those games before in the past, you, uh, past, you'll be right at home with this one as far as that goes. So, uh, but yeah, this is this is insanely difficult, insanely difficult game. To, 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 the game by like, game to play through, you don't have any help or, or walk through because you know I figured this game out myself. Probably took a probably you probably you probably took like three months I think uh, back in the day to go through this game start to finish so uh, like about any help so you know if you don't have the patience for that I would not fault anybody of playing this game in 2023 to, to look at a walkthrough as you did yeah. to, to help get through something to help get through to help get through this in the rough spots the rough spots because because we know what you're doing the game itself is not that long I mean the YouTube. Um, uh, the YouTube playthroughs, the playthroughs game, like about an hour and a half. Right. So, um, because, but, I said, they said, um, I said, like, you know, like, you know, they are, you know, again, if you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. So, um, also, uh, also, as far as the Super NES versus the Super NES versus the Genesis versus Genesis comparison goes, I know, I know, I know, Genesis, it's Genesis, the, 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 which could be the original port of this game, but, um, as usual, as usual, as usual, like across like, like cross console games, I, I think this game looks look. I think this game looks pretty close to to, uh, like like to like, like, Genesis counterpart. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think, I don't think you're really hurting anything by playing this version over the other version, you know. But uh, so, but yeah, I mean, like, I mean, this game definitely rewards patience, trial and error, um, you know, puzzle solving aspects. Um, you do backtrack a lot in this game. That's to be, you know, that's to be expected. So, um, and the story of the game, I thought, is quite good once you actually figure out what's going on with the game and actually, be, uh, I'm actually, and actually get far in the game to figure out, to put the pieces together mm. because there are, be, because, but, but unfortunately, because, unfortunately, because they give it out to you drips and drabs, unless you read the comic beforehand or, or know anything about the game beforehand, then you, you, the, 
they may not be able to like, aware of that. But one of the reasons Flashback was acclaimed so much that did back then and why it's up so and why it's up so and why it's so, so, so popular now is the story. As you mentioned, as you mentioned already, Joe, uh, the story takes inspiration from uh, inspiration like some of like you know great uh, uh, literary sources out there. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, um, you know, um, having said that, did you have any problem? Did you have any problem like uh, did, so? Did you have any problem like the controls um, itself? Um, or do you think that was okay? So, and I mentioned it on my stream. So, th there's to be able to make that first jumping gap, um, you're supposed to be able to hold X, which will make you run, and then you kind of push diagonally on the D pad to kind of make a leap and make that jump. I was able to get that done twice out of probably 20 attempts it takes a while to get the hang of yeah so, so it was either a i i didn't acclimate myself with the controls well enough and that was the issue um but i did realistically chalk it up as there's possible input lag you know since i was emulating it with a wireless controller on my xbox one so there's a lot of factors there that could have possibly contributed to that but I really did want to stream this and, you know, have this experience with people. Um, so, you know, it, that's my fault. I should have just played it on my PC where I know there wouldn't have been any input lag and, you know, whatever. Um, that being said, other than that, no, I didn't see any issue with the controls. Um, I was able to somehow, you know, duck and roll and shoot and do what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, it was just that jumping, the jumping I could not get down. No matter how many times I tried it, like, I mean, I'm going to, you know, I have it right now sitting as pri a private video on my YouTube, so I am going to post it up there for people to to see. But, like, I, it, it's a very dull video, other than listening to me audibly get frustrated, <laughs> trying to do something that I know I can do, because I went the opposite direction. You know, I ran from like that that's that screen where you're supposed to make that jump. I ran to the opposite one, which is the screen that you open up on, and I made that jumping gap no problem. But yet, for some reason, going to the right, I could not make that jump to save my life. So yeah, the game was originally designed for, like I said, you know, like uh, well, I mean, th th again, the, G the Genesis version of the game was the original version, so like so like, like so like so it has the same limitations, but on the computers, right. you could use a joystick, a joystick, a joystick for the game instead. So you know, maybe that might be a bit easier. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's a, there's a bunch of different factors that I realistically put into you know my analysis of of the game because you know that maybe there was input lag maybe that was the issue i i don't know but in the end you know like i said i was able to make the the gap at least twice um i did get to kill some people so i got to at least experience the combat <laughs> and whatever else um and watching videos and to see you know the rest of the game um i i, I enjoy the story i think the story is fantastic um, they did a really good job storytelling with the uh, not only the action in the game, but also you know the little cutscenes and everything else. Um, and I, overall, I think this is a pretty good uh, port. Um, and I'm not even going to say the Genesis game. I'm going to say in general for a PC game that was quote unquote CD quality on a cartridge uh, or floppies. Yeah. I mean, I think they did a, a great job. Um, yeah. You know, if, if I would have played this back in the day on real hardware, I, I probably would have been blown away like you were, in all yeah. honesty. Um, and, like, you know, I might as well touch on it. Like, the music is fantastic. It's one of, one of the high points in this game for sure. Um, yeah, I was going to bring up the music next. The music of this game is a mixed bag to me because I like it. I just wish there was more of it because yes, because to, because the, to be like the, because like the large sections of the game, there's no music. Yes, there's, there's music. So, but you're seeing the background. Yeah, so the background that that was next. the the caveat I was going to throw out there is like I yeah. really like the music, but unfortunately, there's like three tracks through the entire thing, and there's a lot of silence. And Which I know why they did it that way because like you know the background sound effects are important important for gameplay reasons, right? And then also like. 
Um, and it also like, um, and it also like builds tension. So Correct. it's like I understand. Yeah. So I understand why they did it. I just wish there was an option to have music like on or off and forth. But yeah, so, and and the other um, thing too is like uh, the sound of the game, like sound effects and whatnot. Um, I don't know. Maybe you don't feel this way, and I might be you know just looking at it through the lens of 2023, but. Like, to me, the sound effects seemed really muffled, um, almost as if, like, the sound effects were <laughs> recorded underwater. <laughs> uh, that's the best way to explain it. Um, like, I don't know, like, I, I just felt like, you know, shooting the gun, it just sounded really muffled, like you were just firing it into, like, a, like, a, like you had your hand submerged in a bucket, shooting the gun. You know, it just muffled the sound. I don't know. But that was my biggest gripe more than anything else was like the sound effect. The music was so good, what what there was of it. But then the sound effects just did not live up to that same audio quality. And I felt it kind of took away from the game. I actually, yeah, I actually like most of the sound effects. I mean, I didn't, um, you know, I agree with you that some of them sound a bit off. But, you know, I thought for the most part they worked pretty well with like the gameplay. So Yeah, I mean, um, the beeping. For like you know, before you pick up the holocron, and then uh, once you get, finally make that gap and you get to the next area, um, there's an enemy there, and there's like uh, some beeping going on, um, yeah. and like that sounded fine. But and like I said, every, like the opening of doors, um, the gun sound effects. I don't know. It just to me it sounded muffled. But you know, again, that's could be me coming from 2023 looking at this you know, 25-year-old game. Mm, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and again, uh, and again, like, and again, just like I said before, it is kind of hard to see, you know, you know, look at this game for the first time. So, right. Um, so, um, you know, we, uh, you, we, you know, we were talking about the other, uh, the other version of the game a little, a little bit here toward the end. So I wouldn't like, uh, um, but, but, uh, yeah, so, it, um, you know, the graphics, we, we, we've already, We've already talked. Uh, uh, you, you, we already talked a little, you know, a lot about the graphics, yeah. but I, um, but I will. Uh, but I will say, um, your character, the characters themselves, Conrad and the aliens, are not that detailed. They're kind of like they're kind of like uh, uh, because limitations, the limitations of the engine, they're kind of like blurry and just kind of like you know, like like washed out colors. Yeah. But the actual background scenes themselves uh, of the jungle and the base is like a very lush yes. and very detailed. Yes. So, um, so um, they look very nice. So. Um, and, and so again, you know, the, the challenge of getting this onto the carts, because like I said, they already had it, um, so they already, they already were, they already were designing this game for the life before to be CD-ROM quality on floppies. So getting this game onto it, so getting this game to run smoothly on a Super NES, I'm sure it was a programming challenge because, yeah. uh, this is, because this is one of the few games I'm aware of in the system that actually has lo- loading time because uh, there's there, there's a there's a brief but noticeable pause yeah. when you go between like one screen and the other screen because because again it's trying to process so much data that need, that Super NES needs a, a couple seconds to actually generate everything on the fly to, to, to uh, on the fly to like, draw the next screen so um, it's kind of like the old loading. Like it's kind of like the, um, you know, it's kind of equivalent to like the old loading, um, uh, uh, loading screen time that they're, they're, you know, the early PlayStation games had. Yeah. As far as like you know, like uh, waiting for one screen to the other, it's it's not horrible. It's noticeable. You get used to it. Uh, but there definitely is, but there definitely is a, a noticeable, a noticeable uh, pause mm. uh, when, when you're doing that. When you're doing like every now and then. So. Um, and also, and also, when it loads some of the cutscenes, there's also there's also a brief lag uh, before and after that. It's it's very rare to have like it's very rare that that, that you see that you see, actually see loading time on a on a cartridge. But this is but this, but this is one of those cases again because how the um, again because of how complicated a programming job they did on it. Yeah. So uh, did that bother you at all, Joe, or did you uh, um uh or did you just like you know like did what I did and just like forget about it after the um, yeah, on after a bit. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it is, it is what it is, is what it comes down to. <laughs> sure. But, but, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, for the, you know, like said before, uh, the game uses, the, the game, the game uses the password system. The password, the password shown to you on screen for, uh, on screen for a brief period of time, uh, when you're in a new stage. They're pretty simple passwords all together. Um, so like, um, um, not really a problem. Um, for some reason, other versions of the game had a whole bunch of other cheat codes and whatnot. The Super NES version of the game doesn't really have any of that stuff. Like all it has is just the passwords, uh, like that's it. Hmm. So, um, 
But uh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. If you got this game back in the day and didn't have any help with it, this game, you know, you know, you know, this game, uh, this game, like like I did with me, because you 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 could see it last like a very very long time. Mm. So, um, so having said all that. Um, I think that, um, so I haven't said that, I think you might, so, like, so I think you want to play the game today, uh, you're probably best off just buying, like, the, um, uh, they're probably best off just picking up, uh, like, a copy of the, uh, uh, like, the enhanced version, enhanced version, which is available on Steam and modern consoles, because, uh, because, because, like, if you, because, again, with, like, Another World, which had the same treatment done to it, you either can play the original game, the original game, like, you can play the modern, uh, um, uh, the modern mode. Mm. And the modern, um, and the modern, the modern mode features, according to Steam, uh, post FX graphics filters, completely remastered sound and music, a brand new rewind function, uh, which anybody who, 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 um, who's familiar with the Switch should like to know what that is, um, uh, which is variable coin level, which is variable coin, coin level difficulty, and also gives you t- uh, tutorials. Mm. So I think that this is really the best package to buy the game nowadays. I think because uh, now because the purists who want the original game should have to show the original game, and those and, 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 and um they got, like the new like and, and those people who either who, who, who never played the game for the first place or who want a more modern touch to the game can play the modern version of the game. So mm. um. So, and that version of the game is ten dollars currently on Steam. Um, I'm sure it goes on sale that, that every now and then. So I imagine, yeah, I imagine, yeah, I imagine the game's probably the same price, the same price, like another, the same, the same price, like another like system as well too. Um, curiously enough, I also found that right now uh, on Steam, the, re- the, the remake of the game from 2013 is actually on sale. Um, you know, it, um, uh, it will not be in sale, unfortunately, unfortunately, by the time, by, by the time this podcast goes live. But, uh, right now, Joe, the remake of the game's like on like 250. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The original, but yeah, the original price is like $10. Yeah. So, um, and you can wish this flashback too, as well, uh, as well, also if you oh, want okay. to. Uh, but, uh, there actually was, I probably should mention this real quick because I, real quick because I don't know. Because, uh, because, because, because the version of the game, like, is playable. There was, there, there was in the works a third, uh, a third flashback game, uh, which was called Flashback Legends, hmm. uh, which actually, which actually planned to be released for the GBA, believe it or not, um, in 2003. But Daphne went bankrupt, uh, in 2002 before the game could be finished. Hmm. There is, uh, there is a playable, a playable prototype of the game out there, though. Um, so you can play the game, uh, with a patch. Uh, because because the prototype the prototype's only in French, right. be, being how this is a French company. Um, but there's but there's a patch you can download that will that that, that, that that puts the game into English. So yeah, so you can play Flashback Legends at least um, you know, at least like a rough form on on a, G, on a GB emulator. And I don't know how many of those ideas or story ideas are elements or elements that they're, they're elements that they're carrying over to, um, they're carrying over to Flashback too. So uh, it'll be interesting to find out. So yeah, for sure. So Flashback is actually uh, won numerous awards when it came out, of course. Um, you know, the game sold over 2.2 million copies over the years. Uh, like, um, uh, like it's all like various different different versions. It still has the record. Um, uh, um, it still has the record like the best-selling French de- uh, French developed game uh, like of all time. Um, and, and and like you know, reviews of the game back when it came out were. Uh, as, you, as you can imagine, uh, like pretty positive across the board. The, the, Medi- the, um, uh, the Metacritic score, the Metacritic score of the game is seventy-seven percent, seventy-seven percent. So, mm. um, uh, all all game gave uh, the Mac 3DO Genesis and, and Sega CD version of the game for for four out of five stars. EGM gave the Super NES version of the game eight point two five out of ten. Um, you know, Next Generation, uh, you know, gave. They gave the they gave Genesis version three out of five stars, you know, et cetera, um, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like uh, Electronic Game Magazine, uh, um, sorry, Electronic Game Monthly, Game Informer, Nintendo Power, Game Pro, and EGM all gave it like awards uh, the year it came out uh, because how good it was. So, hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, this game, this, this yeah, there's a reason this game, yeah, there's a reason this game. There, there's a reason this game has been remade so much, and why, um, you know, why remakes the game still coming out? Because like, if it, you, you, because like it's for, if it's for, yeah, because like its predecessor in another world, it's, it's still very, very, uh, like, like very fondly, uh, like fondly thought of these days. Yeah. So, um, 
so having so having said all that in hindsight, the Super Nintendo version, the Super Nintendo version of the game, is a very good port of the game. I think like you know, um, you know, minus the minus the minus the limitations of the hardware because the hardware because the game is pushing the push the hardware very hardware very hard in this case. Minus it, minus a couple of censorship, censorship issues because of course Nintendo wanted a couple of things to be censored. Um, but you know, um, you know, like um, you know. Um, you know, like for example, New Washington, the original game was a cult. It was changed to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like, it was changed to a bar. It was changed to something else in Super Nintendo version of the game. Um, and, you know, and there was, a, um, you know, a couple of like small changes too. Minus all of that, Super Nintendo version of the game is very, very good, I, I think. It, it, it certainly is a very playable version of the game. Um, maybe not, you know, like I said before, not the best version of the game to come out back then. I think like most people, most people, most people like argue either, either Genesis or Super Six CD version. Uh, was but it's a very playable but, but it's a very very playable version of the game. This is yeah, I mean, yeah and this is the only version of the game you had back then. You certainly can have like uh, you certainly like I had a lot, like a fun with it. But having said all that, I think that the modern the, um you, the, the, the the modern version of the game which you can play which you can buy for modern for modern systems is the way to go these days because it has both the original, the original and the modern version of the game on there. So, um, but anyway, so. Uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much the game um, as a wrap. It's 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 still it's still I think a very fun adventure game. Um, you know to play through these days as long as long as long as you as long as you, as long as you have the mindset the mindset to go through it because like I said before without a walkthrough this game is very 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 aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know some people but you know some people love that. So. Um, even if you don't have the patience, I th- I uh, I'd argue, and I'm curious to hear if you feel the same way, Joe. I'd argue this game still we're playing through today, like f- f- walkthrough in hand, because you know because it's such an because because the overall complete package of the graphics, the story, and the gameplay is still fun to play today. Yeah, like I mean, like I said, um, I'm gonna revisit this game. Um, so this will be the first game that we have done on the podcast where I uh, I don't have a full opinion of the game yet because i don't feel i've given it a fair shake um so i'm i can't say whether it's good or bad um i think the presentation is good and um some of the gameplay elements are also good um but that being said um i i am going to play through this again and uh reevaluate so Stay tuned for our end of the year wrap up when we discuss what we've covered through the years because uh, through the year because right. th- we'll definitely be spending some time talking about this one. Yes, and I definitely need to spend some time looking at the sequels because, like you know, like uh, you know, I never played, fi- yeah, uh, um, because I never played like Fade to Black, so I'll probably just start with, like watching like a playthrough with, like YouTube and the PlayStation version. Yeah. But um, you know, but you know, I'm curious to see like how that game plays, like, like plays like um. Uh, plays like as well too, and I, um, you know, and I'm going to like buy the remake of this game and give that a shot to see how that is because the reviews, the reviews, of the remake are actually or the reviews, they, uh, the, uh, the remake are actually mixed. Mm. I don't know why, considering the I, I'm not much sure why, cause, you know, considering the original developer and people behind the game, like behind the remake as well too. But from what I understand, um, from the videos that I had, I had experience with on YouTube, is that the 2013 game they updated the graphic style to fit the current gen at the time yep. and a lot of people felt that took away the charm of the original game which i i can see that yeah which yeah, i understand yeah, yeah, i completely yeah, yeah. understand that's like um when they redid uh oh why why is it oh uh monkey island when they redid yes. monkey island one yeah. and two like there was a part of me that was like this is not great you know what I mean? Like it just—it felt dirty playing that game. But I actually love those remakes. I was just gonna say those remakes are still fantastic because yeah. the, at the core they are the very same game. They've just been graphically enhanced, and I think that's. And you can be, always go back and play an original mode if you want to. Anyway, correct. So it's and like, I think that's yeah, going to be the so. same thing with the 2013 remake. I think because the original developers worked on it, uh, the core gameplay is there. Uh, I think as a fan you would be able to enjoy the game for what it is, whereas yep. maybe, you know, a hardcore fan might not because they feel that, like, it's sacrilege. Which is why I think, yeah, which is why I think that they did an excellent choice, the, an excellent choice like, the remaster version, including both the original game and also the, 
like an awesome remaster version of the game yeah. so that you could pick your pick your poison like as it was but because you know so i think it's like so i think it's an excellent way to do it so uh yeah uh yeah that's totally fair uh you know i am curious to hear what you think about this game like later on down the road but uh, uh yeah this was fun like you know this has been you know i've not played you know, you've not played this game for a long time so and like i said before i never I, um I, I never played super NES version of the game and i thought for the most part it handled pretty well mm. it was a very, uh, um it was a very faithful port uh like under the um uh, like under the console so um yeah so uh uh, the prices, the, and, and, so the, and so the prices on eBay um, are actually pretty low for this game, all things considered. I think that maybe I'm not sure why the prices of this game are actually are actually like so cheap, because this, maybe 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 Super Nintendo version of the game didn't sell that well. I can't, um, I couldn't find any sales numbers. It's very hard to find sales numbers like for games that's old, because like you know they really didn't start tracking that information reliably until about like 20 years ago right so uh anything from the age of 90s is pretty much is usually best guesses as far as like sales, sales numbers go so i couldn't really find anything as to as how well this game sold but considering how but considering how popular this game is uh i was surprised to see how cheap this uh, how cheap this game like could be obtained it's pretty cheap as hard like super nice games go so i found the 35 copies of this game currently listed, listed on ebay 10 copies of the game like recently sold uh, these prices include shipping for North American copies, um, cart only. Uh, the game, um, you know, the games, uh, the, uh, the games are anywhere from six twenty five to nineteen fifty. As far as super, um, so as far as super NES games, games go to get to get to get an actual to, to get an actual to, to get an super NES cart for six twenty five is like a steal. Yeah. Uh, um, so, like I said, I was surprised to see how cheap the game was. CIB is not that bad either. Uh, they're, 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 again, there's a wide range of, there's a wide range of prices depending upon how. How pristine you, you want your copy of the game to be, but they, uh, but CIB copies are sold anywhere from twenty seven dollars all, uh, all, uh, all the way up to eighty eight dollars. Mm. So again, like not bad pricing on this game for some reason. Um, you know, maybe 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 Super Nintendo version of the game just didn't um uh um you 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 just wasn't that popular like for whatever reason. Yeah. So I I I, I thought um so yes I'm not really sure why, but anyway um. So yeah, uh, Flashback was a fun game. Um, I'm glad you didn't hate the game, Joe, because I wasn't sure if you'd think about it going into it. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for checking the game out with me. And uh, like I said before, I, I definitely am curious to hear your thoughts. Hear your thoughts on the game later on down the road. So yeah, and I knew I wasn't gonna, you know, hate the game because you know I'm a fan of Prince of Persia. I I love the original Prince of Persia, and you know that, like I said before, that game frustrates me, but it's still a fun time. Um, Sure. And just like with this game, it's like you have to get used to the con- the controls. You have to understand the mechanics. You have to understand, you know, what that jump is and how much of, you know, how many pixel lengths it's going to get you by. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this this is going to be, I, I think it's going to be a better experience the second time around. And uh, I think I'll have a more in-depth uh, appreciation for the game as well the second time around. Sure, that's good. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, you probably you you might want to you might want to you might want to you might want to check out the remastered version of the game then because if you take the quality of life of improvements they gave they gave they gave it they gave it, they gave it like would help you with like a lot especially the you know, you know, you know, especially the rewind feature. Yeah, yeah. Because that that would be a godsend. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna argue that. <laughs> Yeah, I think out of the changes they made to the game, that that was the biggest. Yeah. So, <laughs> let me tell you, if any, if I had it, well, I mean, I guess I could have had a rewind feature, you know, with the, the emulators usually have. But uh, yeah, you know, exactly. like, yeah, you know, like, you know, I didn't want to cheese it last night, so it was like, you know, sure. But definitely, if I if I could have rewound and kept doing that jump, um, the the viewing of that Twitch stream would have been probably even more boring. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so uh, next time the podcast we're doing the podcast, we're doing one of Joe's picks. Uh, we are going to be covering uh, the other Battletoads game that came on Super NES. We already covered Battletoads versus Double Dragon in a previous podcast. We're going to be looking at Battletoads, uh, Battletoads in Battle Maniacs this time around, which I actually, I actually never played. I, I played. I don't know anything about this. Uh, this is a this is a this is a different game than the infamous NES uh, a game, right, Joe? So it is and it isn't. Okay. Um, so <laughs> the NES game is obviously based on the arcade. Um, right. This is about as close as you're going to get to the Battletoads 
arcade in the home. Okay. Um, All right. So it's very much uh, that arcade experience beat them up. But um, yeah, this is uh, this is one that I never really got to play. Um, obviously at the time, because as we've established on this podcast, I didn't have a Super NES. Um, but um, in more recent years, like I've played the one with Double Dragon, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's a beat them up. Um, but I haven't played this one, so that's why I wanted to cover it on the show. All right, but that's all right. Sounds good. This is gonna be one of those gonna gonna be one of those uncommon uh, common cases, like where both of us are playing a game for the first time. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, but we have history with the ori- you know the original IP anyway, so it'll be oh interesting boy, to see how that you know <laughs> crosses over. The NES game is like is like is is like famous in my mind as being um um is having like a very love hate relationship like that game. So because yeah. because I want to love it because to be, because to be a great game. Because it's a great game, like, like in many ways, but man, they made that game harder than it had to be. So yeah, Battletoads sits in the same sphere as um, what's it called? Uh, Ghosts and uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Like yeah, I can see that. I, sure. I enjoy yeah, yeah. the the game and the franchise, but it's very difficult and very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it's got totally. a lot like so. uh, Flashback, where you just have to do some trial and error and figure out what you got to do and improve. But mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> uh, all right then. Uh, thank you again, uh, everybody, for listening to the podcast. We, as always, like we appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, you can leave my Facebook page, or you can also send me an email if you want to. Uh, that email is the SNES Podcast at yahoo.com. Joe, where can they reach you at? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter at j o e s u x three zero. Um, also that J O E S U X three zero, you can look in YouTube and find my page where, uh, you'll be able to see the video of my gameplay of this. And I warn you, it's not the most entertaining for sure. Um, (laughs) that being said, um, I am going to be, you know, going forward streaming the games that we're going to play, uh, that we are going to play, geez, that we are playing for the podcast. So, um, if you want to see some Battletoads and Battle Maniacs uh, gameplay, you can follow me on Twitch. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash joesucks69. Um, 3-0 had already been taken. Can you imagine there's another guy using Joe Sucks as a screen name? I, I don't get it. Anyways. <laughs> Nothing surprising me these days. <laughs> right? like, uh, like, as far as, like, you know, like, using names being taken. It's like, you, you, so, can, like, you think of the most obscure, obscure, weird thing out there. and like, nope, already claimed. Yeah, it's, like, it's crazy. It's like, it's crazy. It's like, who the heck is, who the heck is, who the heck's brain processing, processing that same way? Yep. But, yep. <laughs> but yeah, those are uh, all the places that you can find me. And then, of course, my very public Facebook. You all know how to find me there. And then, yes. uh, you know, I do the Radical Retro Roundup as well. Um, yeah, just just Google Radical Retro Roundup. Now that we're back in action and released uh, five episodes now, you can actually Google it and find it. So, yes. <laughs> plus on that. <laughs> Yeah, and Joe's Facebook. Yeah, and Joe's Facebook page is also the, like like lots of pretty tame these days because, it, 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 because either mostly either like repair jobs or like cat pictures. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when you get thrown <laughs> in Facebook jail for just simply posting a Soul Asylum uh, album cover, you, you kind of have to bend the bend the knee to Facebook. <laughs> Oh, I, I actually, I actually, I like, didn't, I actually like didn't know about that. That's, uh, you know, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, so the first uh, Soul Asylum album has like, you know, a couple like children bareback. You know, that's all it is. It's just some kids' butts, which I mean, I get this day and age, whatever. But it's like, it's, it's an album cover. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, yeah. it, it, it's one of those things. Like, I sent a message to Facebook. Like, come on, like this is readily available anywhere. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, true. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thanks. Well, uh, we'll wrap we'll this up here. Thank you again, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Um, stay safe. Be well. We'll catch you again next time. Later, all. Bye. Nintendo controls 80% of the video market. But no matter how you play the game or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Now you're playing with power. Deep power.